examining phonation acoustically, we find that the laryngeal tone has a fundamental frequency and a set of harmonics, uh, creating what is called a harmonic series. The fundamental frequency, or F0, is the frequency of vocal fold vibration, and this is correlated to the perceived pitch of the voice. The harmonics are multiples of that fundamental frequency. The changing amplitude of the harmonics contributes to the quality of the voice, so that even if two people happen to have the same fundamental frequency, they would still be distinguishable from one another due to the harmonics uh, that go above the fundamental. For a low fundamental frequency, the number of multiples within any particular frequency range is larger, uh, and the harmonics are uh, closer together. For a high fundamental frequency, the harmonics would be farther apart. So for example, in these three images, the uh, top image has a fundamental frequency of 100 hertz, and so the harmonics then are 200, 300, 400, and so forth. The middle image has a fundamental frequency of 200 hertz, so the harmonics are 400, 600, 800, and so forth. The bottom image has a fundamental frequency of 300 hertz, uh, and so the harmonics are 600, 900, 1200, and so forth. So for these uh, spectra of phonation, the first frequency component is the fundamental frequency. The second frequency component is the first harmonic. The third frequency component is the second harmonic, and so forth. The amplitude of the harmonics relative to the fundamental frequency and to the other harmonics varies. There is a regular decrease in the amplitude that is referred to as the spectral roll-off. And this is described using a change in uh, dB amplitude for each octave, where an octave is a music term for a doubling of frequency. A typical voice has a roll-off of about uh, 12 dB per octave, so um, higher octaves have a lower amplitude, relatively speaking. So these images show a drop-off in um, amplitude, and indicate uh, octaves where from the first uh, fundamental frequency of the first harmonic is one octave, from the first harmonic to the third is another octave, from the third to the seventh would be another octave, uh, and so forth, and the amplitude drops um, as you go uh, from one to the next. Um, however, these images are inaccurate in that they make the um, drop-off look linear, and it's not because of this um, octave property with, with a doubling of frequency. Um, so here is an image with an accurate roll-off, and you see the um, amplitudes make more of a curved shape rather than a linear shape. So each time you double frequency, you have a drop in amplitude of 12 dB, so in this case from 100 to 200, then from 200 to uh, 400, from 400 to 800, from 800 to 1600. So given this information, uh, we can compute um, the values of the harmonics and their amplitude. If we have a fundamental frequency, for example, of 125 hertz, uh, with a, a starting amplitude of 55 dB and a typical roll-off. What are our octaves going to be? If the fundamental is uh, 125, then the octaves will be uh, from 125 to 250, from 250 to 500, from 500 to 1,000, and so forth. The amplitude steps will be to drop off a 12 dB per octave. So if we were to look at the um, fundamental and the harmonics over at the right, um, from the fundamental to the first 
harmonic, we would go from 125 to 250 hertz, and from 55 dB down 12 to 43. The second harmonic would be 375 hertz. Um, the third harmonic would be 500 hertz, and from the first to the third harmonic we would drop off from 43 to 31 dB. For the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh harmonics then, we would have frequencies of 625, 750, 875, and finally 1000 hertz going from 31 dB um, for the third harmonic to 19 dB for the seventh harmonic, once again uh, increasing an octave and losing 12 dB of amplitude. So we can't compute uh, easily anyway the dB value for any particular harmonic. We can only, only compute it easily for those um, uh, octave steps. Since the physical body is not a machine, the vocal folds don't vibrate in an entirely even, purely periodic manner. Uh, muscular contraction and the subglottal pr pressure can't be perfectly controlled. So uh, what we get acoustically is a quasi-periodic sound, not a perfectly periodic sound. And it turns out that um, imperfection in periodicity has some uh, clinical use. So we can examine variability in the frequency um, from cycle to cycle, and this is referred to as frequency perturbation or jitter. We can also look at the uh, variability in amplitude from cycle to cycle called amplitude perturbation or shimmer. Um, unusually high jitter or shimmer may be indicative of voice problems. Um, and as a side fun fact, um, auto-tuned that's used by musicians uh, has the effect of decreasing jitter and shimmer uh, in a recorded singer's voice. Uh, and gives it a more uh, uh, regular or, to the extreme, more mechanical sound to it. As we look forward to what we'll be studying beyond phonation, uh, we have uh, three examples here of um, the combination of the phonation sound source represented by the uh, sound spectra with that um, characteristic curved roll-off on the left with different uh, fundamental frequencies, a lower, a middle, a higher fundamental frequency. As a person produces speech, uh, those frequencies are modified by the vocal tract um, as a sound filter uh, or resonator, and uh, the resulting combination then gives you a harmonic series with some variations in amplitude of the harmonics. Um, and depending on how close the harmonics are to each other, we may have more information about what exactly the uh, resonance frequencies are, uh, like in the upper right image, uh, versus uh, less information about what the re resonance frequencies are uh, in the lower right image. Phonation changes in fairly typical ways across the lifespan. Uh, we have shorter, uh, smaller vocal folds in infants, and so they vibrate at a higher frequency. Vocal folds lengthen throughout childhood, uh, giving us an average preteen fundamental frequency around 230 hertz. Gender differences in vocal fold length emerge in puberty. Uh, vocal fold length increases by 63% for males, but only 34% for females. This results in an adult male fundamental frequency averaging around 120 Hz, while an adult female fundamental frequency is not that much different from the preteen level at 220 Hz. The adult difference isn't completely due to those differences in length. There's also a difference in phonation quality. A breathier voice quality is typical for female speakers. 
older adults also have phonation changes. Um, there is usually increased breathiness from incomplete vocal fold adduction. This is caused by uh, muscle atrophy beneath the vocal folds, as well as a, a change in vocal fold shape from the vocal folds being very um, straight to being a little bit more bowed due to um, just use across the lifespan, basically. Uh, fundamental frequency as men get older typically increases, and fundamental frequency for uh, older women typically decreases, so gender differences decrease as um, people get older. This may in part be due to physical changes or may be the re result of attempts to compensate for the physical changes caused by aging. There are also variations in phonation due to voice quality. Um, a typical voice quality uh, does differ according to sex, age, the person's build. There are also um, cultural uh, or regional effects on uh, the voice uh, with people having you know, similar voice qualities who come from similar backgrounds. Um, a normal voice has a relatively clear quality. The pitch and the loudness are appropriate for uh, the needs of speech. Uh, phonation can be produced without undue effort uh, to meet the in individual's conversational needs. We can look at uh, acoustic parameters of the voice to evaluate voice quality. These include things like a maximum frequency range, so the range from the lowest to the highest frequency of phonation the person can produce. Uh, their typical speaking fundamental frequency, so the normal average frequency that they use. Uh, the maximum phonation time, so this is connected a little bit to respiration. Uh, how long can the person phonate off of a, a breath? Um, can also look at the minimum and maximum intensity a person can produce at various fundamental frequency levels. Um, the periodicity of their vibration, so that jitter and shimmer measure uh, that were mentioned earlier. Um, and also the amount of noise generated in phonation in comparison to the amount of uh, periodic energy that's generated. There are different styles of speaking referred to as vocal registers. Uh, a modal voice, which is considered the most efficient and uh, typical desired voice quality, has a full participation of the cover and the body during vocal fold vibration. This allows for the greatest range of amplitudes to be available in speech. A pulse voice quality has increased medial compression uh, and requires a lower pressure for, th for phonation to happen. This results, though, in a lower and more irregular fundamental frequency. Um, it also results in a shallower spectral slope so the higher harmonics have a relatively higher amplitude in this voice quality. The pulse voice quality is typical at the end of uh, sentences or utterances as the person is running out of breath, but it's uh, generally not uh, considered to be a good habitual voice quality. Uh, the falsetto voice quality is an unusually high voice quality created by increasing longitudinal tension on the vocal folds while decreasing the vocal fold length. This voice quality requires a higher phonation threshold of pressure, results in a high fundamental frequency, but a steeper spectral slope so that the higher harmonics are much lower in amplitude. There are a variety of descriptors for abnormal voice qualities. A dysphonia is any voice that sounds deviant in terms of its quality, its pitch, its loudness, or even the ability to make phonation itself. A breathy voice quality occurs when the vocal folds do not adduct completely, um, resulting in continuous flow of air during the vibratory cycle. This means that more air is generally used per second uh, during phonation um, and that the voice is, uh, no has a noisier voice quality at higher frequencies. There's a steeper roll-off of harmonics, so the higher harmonics are lower amplitude. 
This breathy voice quality may indicate a vocal fold dysfunction. For example, if one of the vocal folds is paralyzed, it can be difficult to make a full closure, and so there is this breathy air quality. Um, on the other hand, a breathy voice quality is fairly common in females, um, and that's uh, uh, created articulatorily um, by leaving a space open between the arytenoid cartilages by not contracting the interarytenoid muscle as much. Uh, if a breathy voice is taken to a greater extreme, uh, it's referred to as a hoarse a horse voice. Uh, so it's got basically the same qualities as a breathy voice, but the noisiness uh, intrudes on lower frequencies as well, uh, making the voice sound uh, less phonatory. Um, on the other extreme, if you were to take the pulse of voice, which has a reduced amount of noisiness and uh, higher amplitude in higher frequencies, uh, if you were to take that to an extreme, you would get what is called a pressed voice quality, um, which is potentially abusive on the vocal folds.